A few years ago, uh, late in uh, autumn, I think it was uh, possibly November, Sugi and I went to uh, Jeju Island at the very uh, south of uh, Korea. And uh, Jeju is a, a large volcanic island. It's kind of similar to uh, Japan, which is really just a series of volcanic islands. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very popular vacation spot with Koreans. Uh, we had to wake up very early in the morning to, uh, to take a flight from uh, Gimpo Airport to, uh, to Jeju. And uh, you feel almost as if you're traveling on a bus. You just end up on one of these discount chartered flights with uh, as many seats as possible bolted to the floor. And you're just sort of crammed into this plane. And you get to Jeju in around an hour and uh, you deplane and uh, suddenly you're on this uh, uh, this island that's uh, very uh, 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 strikingly beautiful in a, in a slightly stark way. Its uh, landscape is uh, uh, reminded me quite a bit of uh, Newfoundland. Uh, it has that, that sort of quality of uh, extremely clear air and uh, this sort of beautiful um, cool emptiness uh, to the sky. And uh, so uh, we met a couple of uh, friends, an old schoolmate friend of uh, Sugi's and her uh, husband who uh, took us around. And we drove around the island a little bit and uh, we ended up at a famous um, uh, landmark called uh, Il Chulbong, a kind of uh, volcanic uh, uh, mini mountain that rises up close to the sea and uh, is very beautiful to uh, you you climb up it and you get this very very nice view of the sea plus a, a small town just below and then to one side you also see a bay and in that bay we saw some uh, Henya uh, the uh, the Jeju uh, diving women who uh, go into the water uh, they spend all day just diving uh, without scuba de without scuba gear, and uh, they dive very deep and uh, uh, pick up um, uh, various fi uh, various kinds of uh, seafood, which they uh, then uh, sell. And uh, the uh, Henya have uh, an interesting history. They uh, apparently uh, started as uh, as a way of, uh, of supporting their husbands who were not working. And uh, Jeju uh, was, uh, during the Joseon period, a sort of uh, island of exile where often uh, young men who were exiled by the uh, royal court would uh, be sent to. And uh, they would end up on this, this, this very sort of stark desolate island uh, which was prone to storms. They would build homes that were constructed according to a different style of architecture than one finds on the mainland of Korea and uh, they would continue being young men. In other words, they wouldn't work, they wouldn't labor, they would study and uh, at the same time they were uh, deprived of a, a source of income and so their uh, wives uh, uh, would uh, do housework and uh, uh, also um, derive income for the family by diving for uh, seafood. So these were sort of uh, original super moms. And um, uh, in any case, uh, this uh, this quality of Jeju having a different kind of culture from the mainland has uh, many ramifications. Of course, it's got a huge uh, uh, fishing community, you know, fishing is a big, big part of the economy, and uh, apart from the uh, uh, the young man who arrived from the mainland, uh, there is a strong sense of uh, independence, a strong sense of self-identity on the island, and again, there's a parallel here with what one finds in Canada on uh, Newfoundland with this sense of uh, those who are from away. In any case, um, uh, 
when you uh, travel around the island, uh, there are various landmarks that you can go to. And uh, also, uh, what you find is a, uh, uh, you don't find references to this immediately, but you also find reference, uh, you also s slowly learn about the sad history of the island uh, during the Korean War, just before the Korean War. Uh, there was a strive for independence on the part of the islanders, and uh, this this uh, this striving was misinterpreted by the uh, mainland government as a form of communist rebellion, which was put down very brutally. Uh, and uh, this is part of the island's history too. Uh, it tends to uh, get uh, forgotten.